So for the purpose of the video, can, can you tell everybody how to spot a thick roller? One just sold recently for $6.5 million in auction, but that's still not the highest one that's out there. 99% of the people will never even touch a 24 karat diamond. The sticker they had on it was $28,000. This is, this is uh, silver. <laughs> so I'm wondering at this time, if this watch is actually worth the value that I think it is. And we have that one priced at six ninety five, And that's about half of what you would be able to get it for anywhere else. And on top of that, the ice, ice baby. Come on, man. So the first Rolex I ever got was not something I bought. It was actually awarded to me. Patrick by David, our CEO, founder of our company, PHP Agency, awarded my wife and I this presidential Rolex in front of our entire convention at the time in New Orleans, Louisiana, since we were the first couple to hit a massive goal that nobody in the company at that time of the six years that it had been in business had ever reached. So a lot of sentimental value attached to this presidential Rolex. I wasn't planning on it, but we kept driving by this Dr. Gold store. Gas there, look at the gold store. I drive by, look at the gold store. Gold is silver and precious metals is something that attracts my attention. And they say, you know, I saw this Rolex right in the middle of this cabinet. This beautiful thing. And the worst part about it, the numbers were in green. It's a 2020 watch. The work has been done phenomenal on this one. And one of the good things about this is most of these that you see today, they actually are plated. So the back itself wouldn't be gold itself. It'd be silver. So what they've been doing is they've been putting plates on top of the watch itself, okay. converting it to two-tone, and that's changing the value entirely. This is an actual two-tone watch. It's an actual Wimbledon dial, so it's a factory dial. It's not an aftermarket dial, it's there. Most of the ones that you see, he told me they'd give you some quotes between seven and nine for the dial itself. Most of those are aftermarket as well. So it's a factory dial and it's a factory two-tone, so it's gonna keep its value to quite a bit, actually. It's like a test run. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, man. And it's green, that's, that's what throws me off. You got the green in there, a green color. I like it. <laughs> I like it. So for the purpose of the video, can, can you tell everybody how to spot a thick Rolex? There's several different factors. One of the things about a real Rolex is the weight itself. Yeah. That's a massive distinguishing factor is the weight. And no matter how many times people knock off watches, they never get the weight right, but also they don't get the dial depth correctly. So we see several watches that come in as soon as they hand them to us, it's, I don't know, it's, fixed automatically. Earlier today someone actually brought in a gold president that was, it looked great on, but I said, oh wow, such a nice watch. And she's like, yeah, check it out. So I did this and instantly I was able to say, oh, I hope you didn't pay a lot for that. So when I saw this, I said, yo, and on top of that, the ice, ice baby, come on, man. The sticker they had on it was $28,000. I know my presidential is worth might be about 15, 14, 15, 16, somewhere in there. So it was a large step ahead to go from $28,000. So we'll see what we come up with here in the negotiation process. I have a bunch of these, so I wonder if you would, I don't know, swap out or exchange? Yeah, what do you, the one the RC, the NSC on it? This is, this is a uh, silver. <laughs> I'm big into precious metals. He told, he told me that you are too. Yeah, yeah. I love stocking precious metals, gold and silver. In my opinion, it's called financial defense. No matter what happens in a marketplace, stock markets, uh, cryptocurrency, no matter what goes on in real estate, precious metals seems to always hold its value. So to upgrade into this, what was the final numbers on it? Final number was $6,000 difference. Mm -hmm. My first reaction was he gave me a number that showed me that he respected me. That even beforehand, I don't think it got caught on camera, but they did a lot of research of my videos and my online presence. I can show you what he ended up quoting us for, but I appreciate you going out of your way to actually even get the video and everything oh, okay. else too, so that really means a lot to us. So I'm wondering at this time, if this watch is actually worth the value that I think it is. So the question I have in my head is, does it have any guarantees? Do I have to pay extra for a warranty or a guarantee? That's what's going through my head. Yeah, I don't know if you're aware of this, but you saved a tremendous amount of money by trading another watch for a watch. Because the tax laws actually state that if you're trading one watch for another watch, you get to offset the difference just like you would with a car. Perfect. But if you were trading silver for that, we'd have to charge you the sales tax on the entire amount of this watch. Got it. So, so you I'm, save several thousands of dollars. On, on, on tax. Mm -hmm. The thing with 
Tony, he plays very good poker. He's a very good entrepreneur. This is not the first time he's been around the block. This is a 24.08 carat. Oh, 24 freaking carats. And we had that one priced at 6.95. And that's about half of what you would be able to get it for anywhere else. This is a set. This is a house right here, bro. Keep in mind, I didn't know you guys were coming. Like, <laughs> it's awesome, bro. Bam. Woo. It's hot. 99% of the people will never even touch a 24 karat diamond. And he's been through these in much greater transaction than I have. Usually a lion understands a lion. He's calm, collected, had very little emotion behind him. To him is a transaction too as well. Uh, I appreciated the fact that there was a value behind our friendship and creating a video out of this, that he's here to promote his business too as well, that there's value behind that. This tells me that Tony is looking to progress his business, grow his business, and I like that because I love ambitious people. I love people that want to grow their business too as well. It makes you want to do business with them. Can you tell everybody what's the benefit of doing business with an independent store, an entrepreneur versus a big box jeweler? We have the ability to be flexible. And we have the ability to work with you on whatever needs you need to. So yes. it's something that I don't have to go and ask 20 people about doing something and I don't have to triple my margins in order to survive when it comes to that. With big boxes, they have to pay for advertising and marketing and you have expenses in a business. Hours you're talking to me. I know you're just talking to me, but you're talking to me, so that helps a lot. So. So, what should I never do? online when posting my luxury watches. So if you wanted to take a picture of this and post it, and that's perfectly fine, but the one thing that you never really want to post is the serial number that's on the watch that's on top. Okay, how come? Uh, there's, there's multiple reasons people can knock off the watches, which then you'll be the next serial number that there's 600 copies out there of your watch in particular. Or uh, someone could go back and previously post that that was the serial number of their watch that was stolen, which is obviously not the case here. But they can come in and create a series of problems for you in the future. So I think it's very important just to never post that. If you see online in different places, you'll see black spots just covering up the serial number. The model number is fine. Mm -hmm. but the serial is something you just never want to post. <laughs> Not even brand new, man. Yeah. Why do luxury watches continue to appreciate and value? Why are luxury watches are getting better? Transportable wealth. You can only make so many in a year. You can only make so many at a certain amount of time. So you can transfer it from here to somewhere else and look good while you have it. And it has, I mean, as I said, you can only make so many Rolexes in a year. And so as COVID's happened, as shortages have come about, as other things have happened, things have started to reduce in pro like production. So there's certain things that are growing in value and that's houses, it's watches, it's jewelry, it's, cer it's certain things that have quite a bit of, you know, cool to them and that's definitely watches right now. So. The gentleman just walked out and he's actually one of the best polishers we've had and we've been looking for a good polisher for years. You would think that it's just a normal yeah. normal thing for someone to get in and polish it and do things the right way. Absolutely not. Really? This guy has been a, one of the best assets we have in general. Like he can kind of do everything under the sun, but he's great with metal as well. It's like a big team. Everybody's got their own it's skill. Own specialty, own skill, yeah. right. That's great. Well, I'm not a watch connoisseur, but you know, you stick to the major brands that a lot of people have a desire for. There's a demand for these watches. You know, you're looking at the, some of the major luxury brands. I just want to make sure if I'm buying a watch, it's the real deal. So Tony, what's your top five luxury watches in order? Well, and why? <laughs> Rolex. That, that, that's at the bottom of the list or the top of the list? I, I would say at the top of the list for accessibility and affordability for the majority of men today. It's something that we've been taught to dream about, grow into, and learn, and when you get a Rolex, I got a Rolex. Yeah, it's all songs and all movies. Yeah, 90% of the other brands are still not known today. 
So being the fact that Rolex is the top of the line, that's absolutely the top, as I'm not wearing my watch right now, but, <laughs> uh, which I also wear Rolex. But the second one I would say is AP, which is Audemars Piguet. It's a very high-end brand as well that's grown over the years. It's been one of the top of the lines. It, you could, be, I mean, it's constantly grown in value and structure and, and everywhere above. So uh, I would say the third, probably Patek Philippe. It's on a higher end scale, so 95% of the world can't afford a Patek Philippe when it comes to that. They can go up in the upwards of several millions. I mean, one just sold recently for $6.5 in an auction, but that's still not the highest one that's out there. One of the highest brand knowns today is uh, Richard Mill. It's a very hard watch to get. They don't make many at all. And so that's, I mean, I see them every day trading in the seven, eight, nine hundred thousand 900000 in the wholesale realm, which trade in the millions in the retail realm. There's not many people that can afford to buy those. So. Wasn't there a football player that was actually wearing it while he was playing the game? Yeah. I mean, you think about it, you break the crystal on that, it's a $20,000 fix or something of that nature if you haven't damaged anything on the inside of it. And you're playing football. Absolutely. So those are the top that I would say are recognizable and known brands. And there's many other watches that are also great brands as well. So Where's Hublot? I like, I like Hublot. What would you rank that? Um, top five or top ten? Top ten. Many people will see jewelry and Rolexes as a big waste of money. Why is it okay for faith-made millionaires to have jewelry? You're supposed to use your money wisely. Yeah. Buying watches. Yeah, no. You wouldn't to be giving away. Sure. Listen, watches and jewelry and precious metals is just another form of asset. But instead of just keeping it in the safe, you're wearing it, you're putting it around your neck, you're wearing it on your wrist, you've got it on your finger. So if you want to ask me that question, faith made millionaire, I like things that grow in value. I take care of it. These things are precious to me. And also just to let you guys know, everywhere in the Bible, you got people wearing good looking clothes and having good looking jewelry all over them in their dressing. There's much evidence of that in scripture. Last time I looked, some of the biggest and broadest churches, these mega churches, they got some massive amounts of property, massive auditoriums, massive equipment. Why? Because it's an asset to the church, to the ministry. And so if the jewelry that I wear or the car that I drive ends up attracting the type of clientele I'm looking to bring, amen, so be it. Sadly, I'm not saying that it's right. A lot of people in this world judge a book by its cover. So if that's the case, make it a nice cover until they open it up and they actually discover the heart that you have for faith, for your ministry, for your endeavors that honors your creator.